few weeks ago, I had a friend hit me up who I hadn't talked to in about roughly around like three years. And it wasn't for anything other than, you know, just life happened. We went our separate ways. We had things that were going on that were keeping us from being able to skate. And, you know, as time passed, you know, things changed for both of us. And, you know, he caught me up with what he was doing. Just, you know, first thing saying, you know, hey, how are you doing? Hope everything's going well. I heard this, I heard that. You know, message back trying to, you know, tell him, like, yeah, this is what happened, blah, blah, blah. He messaged me back and tells me, I just want to let you know I, you know, am still skating and I'm trying to make it now as a YouTube pro for, you know, lack of better wording, I guess. But he's like, yeah, I'm trying to make it as a professional skateboarder on YouTube and I have a YouTube channel. And so he sends me a link to the channel and I don't give a chance to actually look at it yet because I'm busy doing stuff at the moment, but I'm at least, you know, trying to message back and say, hey, it's sick. I'm glad you're still skating. And it seems like, you know, it's hopefully gonna work out for you because he had more fo way more followers than my channel does right now and so you know I messaged him back again saying you know congratulations I hope you know the best for you you had a lot of talent and you could really make quite an impact is you know stay dedicated like you were and stay driven and you know good things will come to you and so he messaged me back and tells me hey so I just want to let you know too I started my own board brand about six months ago that way I can actually control, you know, the product that I make. I have pretty much complete control over everything. I just have one person that really helps me as far as within like, the graphics. We go through the whole thing with me. And again, I'm just telling him, you know, congratulations. And, you know, that sounds awesome. And he, you know, tells me the price of it, 60 bucks. The thing I'm bringing up all this for is because he asked me, hey, will you buy a board? And I waited a little bit to message back maybe about like five minutes because I really was busy but I also remembered he sent me a YouTube channel so I go to look at this this YouTube channel that he sent me and then I message back bro I'm sorry I can't buy a board and I won't buy a board the whole thing of that was because I want to ask the question what do you feel about the phrasing of professional YouTube skateboarder and also, what would it take for you to support one of these guys? So going and speeding up the story from here, he calls me and is, you know, kind of mixed feelings about that. He's like, so why wouldn't you buy a board? I look on his YouTube channel. The last thing that he posted skateboarding wise was five years ago. And it was him skating flat at the skateboard. It was a minute long. And it was not crazy tricks. It was literally straight eight some shove it variations, a tray, there was one fakie trick, one nollie trick, and a switch heel flip and a switch flip. And that was it. Everything else was either regular or it was quite a bit of time between some of the tricks. But it was a minute long. The rest of his YouTube channel is pulling pranks on people, is food challenges, is pretty much a lot of different variety of content that isn't skateboarding related. He's not even doing reviews or anything. And for me, that's why I have mixed feelings about it. Because it's like, yes, I have no problem when it comes to, when it comes to a skateboarder that I like. If I want to go buy their board, I have no problem doing that. I don't care if the board's 60 bucks. I don't care if I'm paying retail or if I'm getting a discount. If I want to support the skateboarder, I'm going to support this skateboarder. And usually I'll buy the shoes. That's the big thing for me. Because I'll, I'll go through pairs of shoes still pretty quick, even though I'm not really skating right now. I still am very active on my feet. And I go through shoes pretty quick. So... I will buy shoes. When it comes to boards, I'm a little bit pickier because again, I'm not really skating. So if I'm buying a board, it's probably either gonna be dead stock for a little while, which means it's gonna end up being a wall board or to me, it's just gonna be a wall board. So with that, you know, he, I explained like, dude, I'm not gonna pay 60 bucks for a board when most of what you're posting is nothing skate related. And I asked him, are you sitting on a part? And he goes, yeah, I'm sitting on a part. I've been working on it for like three years. I'm like, okay, so majority of it is what is it park is it street is it transition what is it and he I was like you don't even tell me the ender I don't care what the ender is because or not necessarily I don't care I don't want to know what the ender is if it's a part that you're working on I don't want to see what the ender is spoiler wise I want to just be able to see it in the park and so he's like yeah dude I mean I'm I'm 
I've got some tricks at the skate park and I want to take them to the streets. I'm like, okay, that's where you, you kind of lose me as far as like really trying to support the quote unquote YouTube professional skateboarder. For lack of better wording, pretty much the guys that you'd see constantly creating content, but in my mind, they're not creating what to me it would be like valuable content versus the guys that you see in the max quite a bit or yes on their instagram they're at the skate park quite a bit they're practicing but those are the guys that are putting out parts two to three parts a year maybe one huge part kind of like how mark suchu did with like a 12 minute part but the thing was freaking awesome and then milton martinez putting out you know 10 minute part that was awesome so but when it comes to youtube pros and I had to explain to him, I was like, dude, I'm not gonna support, one, I'm not gonna buy a $60 product for you to go and possibly just do more prank stuff or more food chip. Because of the fact that if you had, like, if you're focused on food and you come out with a hot sauce and it's really good, of course, I would have no problem considering buying that and actually wanting to buy that. But if you want me to buy a $60 product for you to be sitting on a part, which I then sent him the interview section of Shane O'Neill's Nine Club where he talks about how he left Primitive and how he, you know, just puts people on the team. He wants to see that they're actually filming and it's important to not only have some clips for Instagram but some clips for a part. But if you're sitting on something for too long, eventually it dies and the value of the clip starts to possibly fade away. So you need to just be pumping out things for people to be able to see what you're doing. And so I sent that to him, and he goes, okay, that kind of makes sense. And also, too, Shane O'Neill is his favorite skater, so it kind of res resonates with him a little bit more. But the main thing for me is when it comes to YouTube pros, because he also has, like, so who, would, who on YouTube would you support? And I said, one of the only people I actually can see supporting, because he named off a couple people, he's like, um, of the choices he sent me, there's, like, maybe one that I actually said I would support. And he, but he sent me a list of like, okay, would you support Chris Chan? I was like, no, I actually absolutely would not support him because I used to watch his channel. I don't watch it anymore, but I used to watch it when he used to do the trick challenges. Those were awesome. I loved his flat ground game. He has absolutely crazy bag of tricks. But as of lately, he's been doing what a lot of other content creators are doing, which is they need to pump out content and they need to pump it out quick and they need to pump out all their ideas. And sometimes you can film kind of like how I watched um I think it was John Hill's because I used to watch him quite a bit too uh just because I I knew he was like flow for habitat and I was like dude this guy actually is pretty sick same with Aaron he was flow for um I think it was I think it was habitat too I'm not sure someone can uh you know fact check that for me in the comments but you know the guys that were actually you know sponsored and were trying to make it more in the skate industry, not just like outside the skate industry. I was following them for a little bit because I was like thinking, okay, these guys are pretty dope. These guys have quite a different, unique sense of style as far as the tricks, as far as the spots. And especially too, if they're more on the local side or they're within like a couple hours away, it's like, that's cool. I can actually maybe skate that. That kind of hits harder with me as far as maybe wanting to follow what they're doing. And so, he asked me, so would you, you know, going back to Christian? I was like, no, because the last thing I said, I just went to his channel after, like during that conversation. So after he mentioned that, I went to his channel and one of the last videos he did is, I shot my friend with a thousand darts. What in the fuck does that have to do with skateboarding? Nothing. And so looking at his channel, it's not even geared towards really skating anymore. It's geared toward just having videos to put out. And that to me is lazy. That's when it's more of, okay, you're not really caring about the, the quality, you're caring about the quantity. And that's when I just cut it off. So he also listed off, so what about the Braille dudes? And I said, I like what they're doing as far as like trying to teach kids how to skate. They're getting into, you know, the skate parks and they're trying to be, you know, more one-on-one -on -one with some of the kids that are struggling with skateboarding. They do meet and greets. They are really avid avidly trying to get the community involved with what they're doing and I like that however when it comes to a lot of the content that they're doing it's more of the same kind of thing where it's more of the quantity versus the quality in 
a video, I forgot it was like Aaron stepping down from CEO because as soon as I read that, I was like, well, that's kind of interesting. So obviously I clicked it. And so, you know, how Gabe went over his filming schedule and I'm like, okay, makes perfect sense. I'm not gonna buy a board though, but it makes perfect sense because they are a business. Obviously Braille is a business. They need to be able to make money spending so much on the park they need to be able to profit in some way. It doesn't mean that they need to be greedy about it, but they need to be able to make some money. So with them, I watched a couple of the videos where they would go skate some street spots because I'm lurking. I want to see where the hell they're skating. I write down the schools. I go and I actually went to a couple of the schools they went to just to see what it was like. And they're actually pretty sick. So that's where I got a few spots from. But one thing is I watched who skates. I watched what they skate. And for me, it was really important looking at what Aaron's doing because he made a video where he talked about the importance of, after, this was after he went pro for Revive, right? So he made a video talking about the importance of video parts and how they're never gonna go away. Yet, it's very few and far between where you actually get to see a part from Aaron at all. And I know that he's got a family, he's got kids, he's got you know Braille he's trying to, to work with, but the thing is, he made such an, such an emphasis on how important parts were and yet you barely see any from him. You see him screwing around at the barrel house all the time. And that's why too, I will not support that channel because it's like, dude, I get it, you're braille, but get out of the braille house at least once a month. <laughs> Go do something else. Like I don't want to see, it's almost like when it comes to watching like Jaquan uh, footage, it's like, okay, it was popular for a cool minute. Everyone was filming a Jaquan. But the thing is, some people literally had parts completely at Jaquan. It's like, dude, you realize there's other ledges out there, right? And that's why too, like I cannot support that. Like I I know that when it comes to being a YouTube creator and a con like content creator, I want people to be able to control their own content 100% because that means that they get to actually dictate what goes out, how much, when, and pretty much they just are in complete control. Good thing. The only problem is when you realize, oh, for the YouTube algorithm and you know, I'm trying to monetize my channel and they have certain expectations, I'm just gonna put out whatever I can and screw it and hope it works. And that's when a lot of people I've seen before, they'll just do tons of vlogs. They'll do tons of skate park sessions. And it's filmed on GoPros. It's not even filmed on DSLRs, it's filmed on GoPros. And so for me, I don't like GoPro footage really. I don't really care for it. That's just my personal preference. Some people love it, I just really don't. But especially too, like I don't care to see like a whole vlog of how you go from point A to point B. And then like in between, it's just like, hey, so we're all eating at McDonald's. I have a cherry soda. Like, I don't care. Why is that important to me? I don't care. So, you know, yeah, again, going with the Braille juice, I was like, dude, I know Doug, you know, not super well, but I've, you know, been friends with him for I think maybe 10 years now so and I bought a board of his so it was at a local shop I went and bought it because that's Doug I bought it but I don't buy anybody else's except for the one name that he mentioned I was like would you buy a Johnny Geiger board and I was like actually I would I would because he not only is doing something as far as he films parts and the thing is his parts take a little bit longer to film because if you actually watch like the 2019 part that he put out that thing was pretty crazy because some of the tricks in there you seldom see at all. And even his his ender shocked him that he did it and it was sick. So his parts are very creative, they're very different, but he's trying to push the boundary of what actually is possible. And for me, I like the fact that he really focused on very, he kind of had a Chris Haslam vibe going to him of just like trying to you know, push the limits of what actually really is possible and is kind of against the grain for a traditional video part. I liked that. I like too that he is, despite that he's in the skate park a lot, he's trying to do brand new tricks that usually you will either never see unless he's doing it or he's going through and rifling through the tricks that Rodney Mullen did. So that to me is, is really cool because he's trying to recreate tricks from someone that he idolizes and someone that truly was ahead of his time. I understand how awesome Rodney Mullen is. So I would support Johnny Geiger if that was what he was doing. It, like as far as all he was doing because he actually is really progressing. He's doing something different. And But he also takes it to the streets. He really makes sure that the video parts 
he, they take time to be made and he goes out and he films them. So that is someone I actually would buy a board from. Not to say I'm gonna buy a board anytime soon because I just don't really buy boards right now. I'm not gonna buy a board just to have it sit and die in my closet. But that's someone I told him, I was like, yes, I would pay for a board for his because he actually is really doing something. And that hopefully clicked in my friend's head. So I'm not gonna name off who it is because of the fact that one, he has way more followers than me, so it's kind of pointless. I'm not really gonna give him any kind of boost to his subscriber count or anything. But two, it's more of just like, that's a conversation that I feel is kind of between him and I. I really don't feel that it's necessary to name who he is because we didn't leave talking on bad terms. We didn't leave talking on great terms. We just left talking on kind of just like a mutual understanding of what it, the expectations are. And again, it's simply just for me. I'm not saying this is for every skateboarder out there. You might feel a certain way about how skateboarding is, the traditional skateboarding, what you consider a YouTube pro, what you consider just, if, is it just pro across the board? They are equal to the ones that you see in the mags or you see in the, the videos posted on Thrasher or Transworld or the ones that get put out from, you know, like small uh, individual parts or tour, whatever, whatever the case is. What do you feel about that word or that phrase, the YouTube pro? And then what would it take for you to be supportive of them in order to actually buy their product, whatever it may be. For me, I feel that yes, there is a little bit of a difference. There's not the traditional pro that you, for example, see in like the mags, but when it comes to YouTube, you're able to control your own content and you don't have to wait unless you want to. Whereas a company, they could be waiting to put out a video and footage can be sat on for ever. I mean, think about a Death Wish video, Jim Greco, that back 5 on that really, really skinny black rail that was on top of a wall. That was a cover of, I believe that was a cover of Thrasher or Tarantula, it's one of the two. But that was, a that was a cover seven years prior that made it into his part and people were saying, oh, give him soda. It's a bro, he's, that's old footage. Not to say it's not sick, but it's old footage. Like you can't, you shouldn't give someone soda for something they did X amount of years ago. Otherwise you should have gave Bashan Salabanzi his uh, Sodi that he deserved for that lost part that he did. Because even today in 2020, this this man is insane doing things that literally will never other, otherwise be done. But I mean, this video is already getting way too long as it is. But that's just why I wanted to post for you guys. What do you guys feel about the questions? And I would love to know what your guys' comments are because obviously when it comes to being a professional, yes, you have your name on product, you're able to move merchandise, but do you feel that the label of it being a YouTube pro versus just a pro across the board works or not? And what would it take for you to support someone like that? Leave your thoughts in the comments. I, I, I please really do. I wanna know what you guys think because you might say, well, Daniel, you're tripping pretty hard on this, or you know what, you actually kind of make some sense about this, or there might be things that you agree and disagree with. But leave your comments down below. I would love to know what you guys actually think. Please do let me know, and I will see you guys in the next video. Later.